Assalamu alaikum. Hello and welcome to all our friends of sport and our new brands form around the world. My name is Rami Al Harbi. I am nine years old and born in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It is so great to see so many people joining us. How exciting! A warm welcome to you all. My name is Ma Mazen. I am eight years old, also from the beautiful kingdom and born in New York. Thank you for joining the UTS World Virtual Youth Festival 2021, where today we will be joined by our special guests to speak on a topic I personally find am really interested in. Virtual events and experiences in sports, be it amazing events such as this World Youth Festival, which is virtual to eSports, to gaming and more. We have some awesome speakers to introduce, but before we do, would like to invite a lady who has literally given everything to make this festival possible for us kids. It is an honor for us, and we want to thank her for all she does for us. We are talking about the CEO of United Fruit Sports and Psychologist, Ms. Julia Govindan. As the driving engine of UTS, she is dedicated to ensuring that youth of all abilities are placed at the center and given opportunities to thrive on the playing field of life. Julia, we welcome you as you set the scene for this session. Thank you from the heart from us all. Welcome to everyone joining us for the UTS World Virtual Youth Festival 2021 from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We've all come to understand the immense growth of esports and virtual events. Over the last few years, many studies have been conducted to understand the world of esports. A dialogue between the Olympic movement and eSport industries has taken place to see if there'll be future engagement and potential cooperation to benefit society. The question at the start, and for many, still is whether eSports is a sport or an entertainment, and if eSports could be recognized as a sport within the Olympic movement. The first step is not about inclusion into the Olympic program, but rather if eSports is or could be aligned with the Olympic values and regulations. From the outset, we could agree that a common goal is the shared love and competition and a passion for sports. The first eSports forum was organized by the IOC and GAFE to start an eSport liaison group and was placed on the Olympic summit for the first time in 2018. In April, 2021, the IOC made a landmark move by announcing the first ever virtual Olympic series. This included international federations, game publishers from cycling, rowing, baseball, sailing, and motorsports. This was the first ever Olympic licensed event for physical and virtual sports. UTS and this unique festival is all about combining traditional fitness and routines on a virtual platform. It encourages youth activity, and where last year's events welcomed over 40,000 youth from 113 international organizations for a virtual, all-inclusive event. Today, we're proud and honored to welcome some of the leading experts who are giving their opinions and sharing their knowledge about this fast emerging movement. I would like to give a special welcome to His Royal Highness, Prince Faisal bin Banda bin Sultan Al Saud, Abdul Mohsen Al Oum, and Nicole Wolf Sold Mose. But before we proceed, please welcome a special message from Alanud Bil Shibrin from the Esport Federation of Saudi Arabia. Hello there. My name is Alanud, a young and ambitious esports player from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Esports is my passion, hobby, and my job. What I love about gaming and esports is that I am able to play, interact, and compete from the comfort of my own home. I feel my best when I'm participating in tournaments, showcasing my talent, and competing with people from all around the world. No matter who we are, where we live, or what language we speak, the game we play is our common ground 
and skill is the only differentiator. As a young esports player, I aspire to encourage other females to join the exciting world of esports. We can show the world our skills in esports. We can share our journey and show the world how far we've come. His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Bandar bin Sultan Al Saud leads the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia esports revolution. In his position as the president of the Saudi Electronic Sports Federation and as a lifelong gamer, has transformed the growing Saudi esports world into a leading organization around the world. His Royal Highness has many achievements, but one of the ultimate achievements is that Saudi Arabia Esports has reached full, full gender equality. With further ado, Your Royal Highness, how do you see Saudi Arabia's support for esports and is there a plan to host global esports events? The short answer there is yes. Uh, we have plans to host many global events. Uh, we've just hosted the Global Esports Tour, which is part of the Global Esports Federation's agenda of uh, events. Uh, and we have many plans to host over the, the near and short, the short and long term, uh, many global events, and we're having those conversations now. Um, the, there's many conversations across many different pillars, and the government support across those pillars is very high. Uh, there's the sports development pillar, there's the gaming development pillar, among others. Uh, so the government support behind uh, these events is very high. However, one of our main focuses is the growth of the homegrown global IPs rather than just bringing in international IPs. We personally thank you for all your support and for providing opportunities for us. Especially during this pandemic, it has been hard for us to go out and meet new friends and meet friends, but through esports, we can even make new friends. Welcome to you, Mr. Abdul-Wilson. We are blessed to have you join us in your position of general super advisor of student activities of a ministry of education for Saudi Arabia. We have seen during the pandemic that youth such as myself are far more interested in virtual events and activities from TikTok to Snapchat streamers and, go and gaming to esports. You work to ensure positive youth development and so we would like to ask do you think post-pandemic there will be a continued place for virtual events and in what capacity will they thrive? The digital aspects of virtual events will continue to be a part of our lives well into the future. And I believe virtual events will thrive through hybrid events. Going forward, hybrid events will be a perfect solution for the future. It's helped to bridge the gap between potential attendees and events. For example, people who might not have been able to attend an event due to geographical limitation or for any reason, they will be able to participate in events. At the end of October 2021, the Saudi student came back to school physically. The Ministry of Education has taken a hybrid approach by dividing middle and high school classes into the groups, one in the classroom and the other remotely. Teachers provided simultaneous life instruction across both at the same time with switching classrooms periodically. We appreciate you shedding light on the potential of virtual events. We know for sure this UTS World Virtual Youth Festival is already an annual event and we just love it. It means that more youth can be invited than usual. Physical events where mainly the youth of a region are invited. Even more than that, this virtual event is all inclusive for youth of all abilities. I am so hyped to be introducing the next awesome speaker. She is one of the legends in the world of esports, nicknamed The Wolf. Playing in the female League of Legends player, at age 24, she is already a huge rising star and she is living the esports dream as a player, an advocate and an ambassador for the esports generation. We are honored to have Miss Nicole, the wolf, joining us. 
Nicole, do you think post-pandemic there will be a continued place for virtual events and in what ways will they thrive? So I definitely believe so. And the reason for that is simply because virtual events like these can gather and connect people from all around the world, which is an incredibly attractive factor as it breaks the rule of location and time, which furthermore has had a huge impact for a lot of people who before wouldn't be able to attend these offline events, but now gets the chance to participate in the virtual ones. Another positive thing with the virtual event that I wanted to note on is that a lot of the time, people from different backgrounds and societies gets to be in the same room and break down stereotypical barriers between cultures, which then leads to a bigger ac acceptance of each other. So this same exact argument also applies for esports and especially when it comes to esports teams who's not represented by an organization, because for a lot of those cases, the players are not able to participate in these offline events due to that they're not able to cover the costs of the travels to get there. But since the last nearly two years, most esports tournaments or events has been virtual. That means that everyone has been able to participate. So I, by that, I also I don't I don't want to take away from the fact that offline events are incredible and they're one of the biggest factors as to why esports is so amazingly great. Um, but when you're involved in esports, a huge percentage of your time is spent online and virtually. So the only thing breaking this being online is actually going to an offline event or tournament. And people are always willing to travel wherever it might be to participate. And <laughs> as a gamer would say, that is what makes it worth it. To not only shed light on the positive sides, we also have to remember that these past nearly two years has also been very challenging for esports. And a lot of teams as well, like a lot of people has lost their jobs due to offline events being cancelled, tournament organizers had to drop projects, tournaments, and some of them didn't have the means to continue supporting the scene of esports. So furthermore, because of that, a lot of teams disbanded, and especially when it comes to the female and marginalized esports scene, because these tournaments were not happening, so there was no reason for the team to continue to exist, basically. It is great to hear your optimism and your opinion as someone who's active virtually and physically. What we are learning is that it is clear there are, there's a growing interest in these events. We all understand and support our kingdom's vision for 2030 and the quality of life program as part of this vision. As we heard, in session one all about what the vision is so if you haven't seen it yet definitely take a look your royal highness we would really like to understand from you how do you see yourself cooperating in this vision 2030 framework uh, the future of esports in saudi is very strong uh, we expect to be a one of the global hubs uh, for gaming and for esports, uh, with along with many other uh, cities on the international scene, um, we are getting a lot of support, uh, as I said previously, from the government. But more than that, we have a lot of support from a very strong community, a very youthful population, and through the support of the community, our IPs are growing year on year. Uh, through the support we're getting from the government our industry is growing year on year. And with both of those, uh, we fully expect that the industry, uh, the gaming and esports industries will contribute 1% of the GDP by 2030 as part of the Vision 2030. We are excited for our futures and those of the next generations in the kingdom. It really is a massive vision but we know that everyone, including your Royal Highness, will do your best for society. Thank you so much. Mr. Abdel Mohsen, we understand that your work also involves over the last two years e-learning due to the pandemic. We must admit, after spending months at home, it wasn't easy. I actually missed school and my friends. Can we ask you, what are your thoughts on the application of educational electronic platforms in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and how can they be applied to sports? The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia 
has demonstrated a role model through comprehensive and equitable access to distance learning opportunity during the coronavirus pandemic. The Ministry of Education enabled 98% of students to access the Madrasati platform, which is Manassat Madrasati, while 2% had continued learning through Ain National Educational Satellite Channels and Ain Educational Channels on YouTube. With implemented of quality standards to ensure effective and qualitative e-learning and education outcomes. These platforms have been used to teach students physical education for their more implementation of several physical activities and sports programs. For educators around the world, they no doubt appreciate your thoughts on this topic. Thank you for sharing your expertise with everyone. Wolf. If I'm allowed to call you by this name, we all heard that esports is a danger to traditional sports. Do you think esports is endangering the cultural heritage of sports? As someone like you who balances physical exercise and is one of the world's best in esports, finally, how could there be an encouragement for youth to keep physically active especially during such a difficult time so both yes and no speaking from an esports perspective the virtual events has been the saviors of esports after everything got shut down due to the pandemic so while the esports scene was bleeding it was also hungry for these tournaments and events to happen which then concluded in a lot of people being active within these spaces However, I also believe that past these nearly two years of esports going more virtual than ever, it has brought a lot of uh, awareness all over the world in regard to the better side of digitalization and esports. So this means that people got to know about esports and how it can bring people together, even if it's only on a virtual basis. But this has proved to a lot of people when they didn't have access to anything else but the virtual is that the stereotypical mindset of that gaming and esports makes people antisocial and it lowers our social skills slowly got proven wrong. Meeting online and having these community communities virtually is incredibly uh, incredible. <laughs> and you get to meet a lot of people from all around the world. You get to know about other cultures and societies and you get friends for life. But on a more serious note, I don't think that virtuality should be overruling offline events and engagements as, as it's very important with this balance between the two of them. And being together in real life is what makes all of our individual online worlds a reality. Well, you definitely inspired me and I agree with you. I try to keep a balance, but over the pandemic, it wasn't easy. However, if you can do it, so can we. Thanks for your inspiring words. Us Yav had, have had the privilege of technological advancements from the internet to Google, iOS and Android, many options for gaming consoles and being so influenced by social media. This is where we find many of our role models. Of course, mom and dad, if you are watching, you both are role models to me. But online is where the action is, especially in the last two years, as we are at the fast emerging intersection of sport and gaming with esports. Your Royal Highness, can we ask you what you think are motivators that engage you towards esports? I think one of the biggest motivators, one of the things that draws in uh, people the most to gaming and esports is that social aspect. It really is a close-knit community. It is a, even though it is global, it is within, without borders, uh, it really is a small community. And the great thing about it, and the thing that I find most fascinating, is you have an opportunity in gaming and esports to really stake your claim without any preconceptions. Uh, you are merely there based on your skill level and you can lead based on your ability to lead in your skill level in that sense uh, without any of those preconceptions of uh, the way you look or your religion or your gender or any of those other thoughts which are just human nature those are preconceptions you would always have um, and I think this is a very thing, very unique thing to esports um, that differentiates it from any other sport and it really does become its own language 
Royal Highness, thank you for sharing and opening our eyes to see what some of the crucial factors are that bring youth into the eSport world and how it differs from traditional sports. Mr. Abdul Masa, you have been in the education field for many years and have seen the education system with and without e-learning, e-games and e-sports. I don't know what it was like before, but for us, accessing education virtually can be really fun. Do you think that e-games contribute to the educational develop of students from what you have seen and experienced? There is no doubt, studies have shown us that digital game-based learning help to improve students' performance. It allows the education to change from teacher-centered to a student-centered environment. This is kind of game used as convenient and interactive learning method for learners. It enhances students' learning interests, which helps to increase motivation toward learning, improve performance and achievement. Thank you once again for sharing your perspective as this is an important topic and we all need to understand the benefits as well as the challenges of e-games and e-sports. If we have learned anything during the pandemic, it was the ability to adapt, be innovative and flexible. A recent study concluded that 65% of younger generation sport fans now consume sports on their mobile phones. We know that we are part of a digital revolution and the eSport industry is adapting to all these changes. Do you think digitalization has improved sports experience and if so, in what ways? For eSports, the impact of digitalization created the profession. So without the internet being developed, we would have never experienced playing it together or against each other online and without that tiny detail esports had never been born so with this constant development of digitalization esports is growing alongside it which is a huge factor as to why esports is as big as it is today and only growing further once again nicole i totally understood your points and in some way i have felt more confident when i play esports and I also have built closer friendships with my classmates as we play against each other. We are excited to see you next, to see your next event and hope that you win. I would like to thank all our special guests and an extra special thank you to our scene center, UTS CEO, Julia Govindin. I never took part in an event like this but I definitely want to do it again. Dear audience and friends, today this session looked at the emergence and growth of virtual events, esports, e-gaming, and e-learning. The digital nation is here to stay. Now is the time to understand how to use it for the better and protect from the safety and security challenges it can present. We are grateful for this virtual event and look forward to being a part of it next year. The world needs more events that are inclusive, that don't discriminate, and that treats everyone equally. We wish you all a fantastic and fun festival experience. Tell your friends, tag us in your posts. Hashtag united for the future and enjoy yourselves most importantly. <laughs>